So really quick, I just want to survey the audience. How many people use uh, social media to network? At all, they're like, we're not saying it's a bad thing. I'm about to go into why it's a good okay. thing. So, <laughs> okay, there's just a certain way to go about it. All right, so let's talk about the benefits because I know you guys use it to network. What are the benefits? You were talking about using it to build a relationship, mm -hmm. establishing that foundation, yeah, so that when I'm ready to reach out to you, it's like you already know me, you already know who I am. Exactly, what's your strategies for cultivating that relationship with? I think just showing that I genuinely appreciate what you do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times someone will choose metrics over meaning, right? Being where I can tell, okay, maybe this person has a high number range or whatever, like everything on the surface looks great, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if there's organic alignment. So for me, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give an example. There's a girl on Instagram right now. Her name is Jerabine. You follow her, Kayla? Oh, you give a name. What's okay. her name? <laughs> She's really dope. I haven't networked with her yet. Okay, I'm planting my seed because I genuinely appreciate yeah. the sweet Caucasian girls content. You know, she's into fitness. She's into her lifestyle, um, and she just her vulnerability. She pours it on really heavy. So I make sure that she knows. Not even because, yeah, it's strategic in a way, but not with ill intentions because yeah. I'm just like, let me play chess with you. No, but I make sure that I'm engaging. She's an influencer, you know what I mean? So she's gonna love a comment, her, right? you know and, what I mean? And here's the thing, in engaging with her in that way, right? Like you in the DM, like, oh my gosh, I love what you just did, this is awesome, you mm -hmm. tweet and all this stuff. And then when you see this person in person, it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> they feel like they know you because you actually interact and you talk and you've been cultivating this relationship. Exactly. Then it's like, girl, let's hook up. Here's my number. And then mm -hmm. that relationship grows. And that's where the real networking, if you will, mm -hmm. happens and starts to take root. But it's all in cultivating that relationship in a very authentic, genuine, strategic mm -hmm. way, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have something to speak about. If yeah. you do happen to yes. see this person yes. yeah. in IRL. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? One thing I'll add though, like not to be creepy with it, because yeah. like, like some people do exactly. that, where it's like, I haven't seen you or anywhere in the world. It's like, yeah. oh, that's like your daughter. She's like, 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 Mm -hmm. You know, I don't just follow anybody. You follow me, I don't follow back just because. Oh, I know. I might know you. We went to high school together. Cool. <laughs> okay. I don't need to follow you. I did a purge the other day. I was going through like, don't need to see that. Don't need to do that. Just like taking it out. So I think it's a matter of like purposeful following as well. Mm -hmm. If you follow me, like cool. I will see who's following me. And I think also from the networking, your brand is a big part of networking as well. Yeah. So if I go, you follow me. I'm gonna see your page. What's your bio say? What's your photo? you know, what's in your feed? Do I want to actually engage with this content and have it come into my feed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's not, like, okay, you're doing ratchet stuff, all right, cool, I don't need to see that. Right. Or you got a bunch of stuff that I'm not into, it's like, it's not a thing that I want to follow. So I'm not gonna reciprocate that. You follow me, and I know what I'm doing, I'm not paying attention to what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. You haven't presented something that I actually want to follow and engage with, because then, you could be someone, oh, I actually like this person. This is cool content. Mm -hmm. Let me actually go to their page, see what they posted today. So that your brand is a big part of networking as well. Because like exactly. nowadays, people have interviews and someone looks you up. They Google you. They're going to look at your social profile. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to get a professional job, you're not doing professional things on social media, make it private, get a burner account, whatever. Just don't have it mixed up because you're like yeah. what you're presenting in that interview versus what you're presenting on social, which is a lot broader and more of a risk for the company. Mm -hmm. As a whole, those are the things you have to think about. So, if you want to do ratchet things, have a burner account or keep it keep it private. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. Um, <laughs> 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 I was going to think back on that. Um, how you frame yourself is important. I also think there there are communities on social media that you can learn a lot from. So, on Facebook, there's this great community called um, NY Tech, and in that community, there's a lot of folks like me that you can network with. And we have this thing called give, ask. So if you need something, you put ask, you say what, the, what it is and you put it out in the ether. People who wanna help you will come in. Mm -hmm. And you also have give, hey, I just got hurt from the HR person, we have these five jobs open. Put, so if you're looking to network, sometimes a good shortcut is find communities online. Um, Facebook's great for that, um, where you can go and engage with folks who might be engaging in this aspect of giving and receiving at the same time. So I think uh, you, you wanna be 
sometimes you don't have to outreach in a cold way if you can get into a broader community and where you can just get clout off the fact they're just a member. So that's a that's a thing that I have seen people leverage, at least in the tech side, very well. Yeah. So I like that you said that because the theme to all of this is networking at scale. So like I don't know about you, me and Chasey have had Chasey and I we've had these conversations where it's like sometimes it gets overwhelming because it's like I gotta do lunch with this person. No, I gotta. I'm doing lunch with this person. Gotta catch up with this person, email, etc. But the theme of social media is it allows you the opportunity to do it at scale. Just con just being in the comments makes you top of mind. When I have to think of like who's a host I want to hire, you know, for my job, aside from her being my friend, she would come to mind because, you know, I see Tracy or Kayla on social. So that's a theme of that. So I wanted to very quickly touch on LinkedIn though, because I show of hand who uses LinkedIn. I hope you all. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, because you've hired people via LinkedIn. Yeah. But I think there's a key to how the approach, right? Yeah. And I'm sorry, people who you didn't know that reached out to you. So what is that key? Yeah, so I'll tell you guys a story about this. So um, when I was at Breather, uh, we, um, we were hiring. And this young man reached out, and he had gone on, read every article about us, um, did a lot of research, and basically came up with a business plan about how we can make our business better. And it was it was like a Wharton grad made this thing. It was thorough, it was 18 pages, it was a slide. Didn't know who this kid was. I get this deck and I read it, and I go immediately to our HR person, like, we gotta hire this guy. Because he, he had thought about it, and he had shown in that presentation that he was willing to give and think through really, really hard problems that I was trying to figure out and solve. So I think a lot of folks, when you, when you reach out on LinkedIn, don't be afraid if this is a really a place you wanna work, to kind of think through what are they facing. Um, another example is my friend at Spotify, she hired someone who was like, hey guys, you guys don't have the translations of a lot of English songs into Spanish. I'm, you know, all my friends in Spain would love to, you know, read what the lyrics are here. She came up with the algorithm to automatically transcribe the audio into Spanish. And she made it, gave it to Spotify. They hired her to be the head of translations at Spotify. Mm -hmm. off of LinkedIn. They created that. Book. Yeah, they created a job for her because she took the time to solve a problem. So on LinkedIn, if you want to work somewhere, put in the work. Think through what they're dealing with and how you can help that person do their job better and go and so take the L and, and see what, what happens. I guarantee you, at the minimum, someone's going to say, you know what, I don't have something for you yet, but I want to meet you and talk to you. So yeah. that's, that's a big, big thing I've, I've leveraged. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's good. Kayla, I remember we were chatting and you were talking about like people just being obvious extreme opportunists. Yeah. And I'm curious to hear, in your opinion, like how can people add value? Because I think that's key, right? And yeah. Top of mind. I mean, it comes in various ways, but for me, I think most importantly, just it's just important to follow up. And I think people only follow up when they want something or they're looking for something. And I just try and follow up and just you came across my mind, wanted to say hi, hope all is well. Congrats on that panel you just did yep. with Samsung and name it, you know, looked really awesome, which I could have made it. Happy holidays. Like just to stay at the top of your head, I feel like when you follow up people in general, it keeps you at the top, at the forefront of their mind so that when something does come along, they're like, yo, such and such reached out to me the other week. Like I'll reach out to them for this opportunity I have. Um, so I think just genuinely following up with people is important. And like he said, like have something that you can bring to the table. If you want to meet with someone, if you want to pick their brain, like again, you got to remember that you're asking someone to stop what they're doing, to stop their business, to stop their day, to give you their time, right? And so, what are you getting in? Re what are you giving in return? Whether it's hey, can I shadow you for the day? I'd be willing to assist you and you know help you out throughout the day in exchange to just you know talk to you throughout the day or. You know, I see that you're so busy with this fitness thing. Like, I'd love to, you know, the same thing to shadow you. I think you've got to be willing to give something in order to ask people for something in return. Because, again, you're asking someone to stop what they're doing, stop their life, stop their money-making business, and give to you. But, and it's nice to say, like, just give from my heart. Like, that's great and all, but it ain't for so many times I can give from my heart. <laughs> you know, like, sometimes you do that and, like, it ends up blowing up from your face and you're like damn every time i try and help out yeah mess it up. and then i think when it comes to maintaining relationships um seeing how you can consolidate 
So like for instance, um, next week I'm gonna be meeting up with um, one of my girls. She's not a close, close friend, but we're cool. And I know that she's building her brand as a fitness influencer. Fitness is a, it's part of my oxygen. It's a major component to my life. So I'm just like, yo, let's go grab a workout. Plus we can create content. You know yeah, what I mean? Yep. Yeah. And so I'm not taking away from her day. I'm just adding to it because it, yeah. I know this is what you would be doing anyway. Right. So since this easily aligns, let's just do it together and not, you know, two for one deal, a sale. <laughs> <laughs> me and her have this very, like, if you notice me make any weird faces of her, it's just our usual dynamic. One, uh, one, one thing I'm going to add to that is like what she said earlier about the farm analogy, I think is really apropos to networking. So you gotta, some plants you gotta water once a day, some kind, sometimes you gotta water them, you know, once a month. Or if it, it's a cactus, you know, that's like, I call like my best friend cactuses, right? I'll see you in two years and be like, we never, you know, never miss the beat. But you have to know in your network who you need to water every day, who you need to water once a month. And you gotta make sure if you don't water that thing, it will die. Mm -hmm. And your relationship will die mm -hmm. if you don't water it. So a lot of you guys are in sales. You guys use CRMs all the time, you use Salesforce. You guys know how to do it, but a lot of folks don't do it in their personal life. And you need to, even at scale, you need to make sure you're, you're watering all your relationships consistently. Make sure you have everyone who matters to you somewhere written down. And if you have to do it in Excel, I do it in Excel. I make sure everyone who matters, I touch base with them at least once a month. Let them know what I'm working on, ask about their family, genuinely. So you're not the one who sees an article about someone and then you reach out. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? When someone reaches out to me just because they saw an article or because I did something positive, I put them in one bucket. Yeah. Whereas if someone okay. reaches out to me, I'm like, hey man, your birthday is coming up. You know, what's going on? Like my boy Paul over here. Yeah. Paul, Paul. Paul Johnson. Yeah. Like Paul, I'm like, that's my man. So, uh, so that, that's one thing I want to add. Keep in mind. I think that's important. And I, and I think um, some people might struggle with like, how can I figure out what value I can bring to the table, especially if they're entry level? Mm -hmm. And just know that it doesn't necessarily have to be like the articles or like what your job title is. It could be something as simple as a positive word. There's people who I know who like, they don't give, they don't add anything else to my life aside from just positivity. And that's fine. That's okay. I just enjoy being around them, right? Mm -hmm. Or the fitness thing you mentioned. I'd be surprised a lot of people hit me up about the fitness thing, which is dope. It's awesome. Whatever you can relate to, social media is really helpful for that. Going back to that again, just because you can see what is Ansem doing? What is he up to? Oh, he likes this. Oh, he has a daughter, etc. Just creates more conversational pieces. Mm -hmm. But what you said, Lee, you made me think about something. So you said, mm -hmm. once you don't water it, uh, it dies, the plant. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a scenario. Let's say, whoever wants to answer, um, someone hasn't hit you up for six months. You gave, you did an informational with them. Mm -hmm. They haven't hit you up for six months, and now they return. And first off, I'm guessing it puts a bad taste in your mouth. Yes, no. No, it doesn't. People are busy. Okay. People are busy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm busy. It's like, so okay. if it's a, I'd rather you like wait till you have something to say mm -hmm. rather than just say it just to say it like hey i got this half-ass idea it's right like all right now you, when you, when you get like one shot to make a first impression mm -hmm. so now you've gotten my attention i had information with you and, you and now you're in my thought circle now it's like you come back again and it's like oh now i got a whack idea now you're getting pushed back yeah. i'd rather you wait longer and i still remember you in this high regard and you come back with a fire idea exactly that's like better even if it's like two years later a year later you know, it's kind of like a long time, but mm -hmm. you know, I'd rather you wait to come with something you actually have to deliver rather than just like yeah. rushing it. Like, okay, I talked to him yesterday on the panel, let me hit him tomorrow with something like, what's the idea? You don't have anything. So it's like, you're not bringing, you're not delivering on that end. It's like the guy that had the, the poster and all that to kind of get your attention to the right. internship. Right. What's the end, behind it? You know? Love it. That's great. Oh. That's a question I kept getting. And you guys all agree and feel the same way? Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on how our last interaction ended. You know what I mean? If you were like, yo, next week I'm gonna send you this, I would love your immediate thoughts, and then next week ends up being 10 weeks, I'm like, okay, yeah, what's going on? Like the reliability factor is already walking the plank. So that ends up being a stain on the relationship. But I don't answer them, even if you say, I waited six months because I wanted to pour all of my energy, okay, attention, research, it. then yeah. that's cool. Okay. I'm into delayed gratification. I think a follow-up in general is important and necessary. You know, I think a lot of times we feel like we 
we wait until we need something again or we have something yeah. before. But it's just like, hey, I just want to check in and let you know your words that fall on deaf ears. Here's what I've been working on. It, it makes it, it makes more genuine and of it because like the fact of like if you always want something, I definitely have a icky feeling yeah. about you. It's like yeah. you only hit me when you want something. Because yeah. right. like, I have a friend that is now like you know in a friend circle not as much as they were before. But it's like wait. I reach out to say, how you doing? How's your family? How's mm -hmm. your mom? And it's like, no response. When you want something, you're reaching back out. And it's like, all right, now I kind of see like where this relationship kind of is. Yeah. And now I don't reach out to ask about your mom, your family, anything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's no beef, but it's just like a matter of like, I'm kind of seeing you moving kind of funny. So now I'm putting you, and this is a friend, someone I do consider a friend, but it's like, I'm not reaching out every day. Yeah. You know? Thank you, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> and again, as an informational, going off the example that you gave, you don't have to hit me up every month because wasn't an informational to become a friend right, right, right. Yeah. per se. So yeah. like, be busy, book and less. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say one more thing uh, on that. If you're thinking about me, you're gonna have a lot of reasons to reach out about how to provide value. So like, you know, there's some folks, if, if, if you and I had a conversation I told you I'm focused on this thing, you came across an article, or you know there's a conference coming up, you know, send that to me. I'm gonna wanna hear it. It might not lead into us getting coffee, but that's a value added thing. Yeah. So I feel like when, when I hear from you and it's more so like, hey, based on our conversation, here's something I want to share with you. Mm -hmm. That to me is something that comes off much more than So I think that's one of those things where if you're looking, if you met someone, you're looking to stay in touch with them, it's one of the things you can do is just think about, ask them, what are you focused on? What are you fighting through? What are you trying to get done? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, think about them. And when you see something that could help them out, just like you do with any of your friends or your mom or your dad, you know, send it over. And I think it's a, uh, they'll really appreciate it and you will build some of that social capital that we're relationship capital trying to Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then it's even better if you activate your self-awareness and doing examples of how you can help them. Yeah. Like, hey, by the way, I'm not sure if you realize, but I'm a beast <laughs> at graphic design. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you have any questions in that arena, holla at the girl. Yep. And you know, edit that, rewrite yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>